Hi, I'm Dee and welcome to 1833. So what's going on people? A review today. I think I'll show you more arms than I usually share. I might have to not do that again. <laughs> anyway, what's going on? Um, today we've got a uh, Belize and rum. I'm not sure if I've done a Belize rum before. I'm trying, I was trying to think, but I didn't go back through the catalogue before I did start the review. But um, yeah, I'm not sure I've done a rum from Belize before. I've had rum from Belize, but I don't think I've reviewed a rum from Belize on the channel. Um, but I, a bit apprehensive though. The colour is beautiful, firstly. Gorgeous golden colour, but apprehensive because it's a rum made from sugar cane juice. I'm not usually a fan of that kind of rum, but you know me, I'm always open, always trying to try new things, so we're giving this a go. So we got the Kapali rum, and as I'm sitting here talking to you, I'm looking at this this lid, I realise that I should have brought a blade out to uh, cut this, because uh, it might take a while to open it. But whilst I'm fiddling with this, let me um, just say something on my mind. So, Try to keep politics out of this, you know, about the rum stuff, but <laughs> I noticed something that was very funny the other day. So, um, you know, you got these these um, bands and Russian stuff and what have you, and you can't, a lot of these companies can't, you know, like, can't sell to Russia anymore. So I saw uh, online these Russian women, these rich Russian women, like cutting up Chanel bags and stuff and saying, oh, I don't, you know. And I noticed that the same thing happened in America with the whole Colin Kaepernick when he went, got, got like a night deal. I've always thought to myself, well, that's a bit dumb, right? Those companies already have your money. Why are you cutting up or burning your shoes? It doesn't make any sense. Nike has their money, Chanel has their money. What is, you're not hurting anybody but yourself. You spent money on something, now you've cut up, can't use it. Anyway, I always thought that was quite dumb. Perhaps someone can explain the intricacies of that to me. Um, actually, no, don't, but I don't really care that much. <laughs> so one thing I have done in a long time, it's actually read through the blurb at the back of a bottle of rum, but this one is a little bit interesting. So I thought I'd take a couple of seconds to read through that. So, bear with me. Uh, let's, let, let's show you first. Let me show the colour. Got up to get some light in it as well. There we are, beautiful. Can you see it? Nice, gorgeous colour, right? Like a, not quite a, yeah, kind of a honey sort of colour. You know, it reminds me of, you know, um, for those you have it where you're from, you know, KA, and they got that, that cola, that cola champagne drink, that golden colour, yeah. Reminds me of this, yeah, that's what I get from this bottle. Gorgeous, gorgeous colour though, really is really nice. So, went to read that too quickly. So, because it was quite interesting. So, we grow our own organic heirloom sugarcane on copal tree farms in Belize and overseen the making of our own from start to finish. Pure canopy water from the jungle swine at our distillery is a perfect complement to the flavours of our striking heirloom normal sugarcane varieties. And it goes on blah 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 blah. But I thought it was quite interesting to say that they, you know, the effort they're going to to get that pure canopy water. I don't know if it makes a difference. Could be some marketing gump, but it was nice to see it. Anyhow. Anyway, you know we do. You know, you know my sound check. So bear with me. Get out to the mic. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, it smells good. Mm. Okay. So I like to smell. Let me see a glass again. Better. Sent on that, spins around. What's that? I don't know if that's a national. Can you, let's get, can you see that? Is that in focus? Can you see that? Is that yeah? I don't know if that's national animal of Belize or something. Or just a, a symbol on the ball. Oh, I'll look, I might look it up. Okay. So definitely smell strong. You smell, get more of the smell in the glass. So obviously, why I poured it out to do it. So. First thing smells, smells smells bloody strong. That's the first thing you get. You get at least it smells like a proper alcoholic drink. But it smells like a proper rum. But it's a little bit citrusy. Yeah, it's a little bit citrusy. Maybe you get a bit maybe a lime or lemon in there as well. But it's definitely maybe some orange. But that zest, citrusy zest is in there is in there coming through. I want to say something a bit, I want to say maybe a little bit chocolatey as well, you know? It's been a while since I smelled something that's got 
as many things going on as as this one. Actually, the the, the one I did in Mexico. What's that one called again? Oh. I can't remember. What name escapes me right now. That was a quite a nice smelling rum as well, actually. Excuse me. It was something that hit me. I'm not quite sure what it was. I mean. I missed it, but yeah. So the main things that come from this is you get a very strong rum scent. The citrus, a citrusy scent in there as well. Um, a little bit, a small hint of maybe something like chocolate in the back just gives it a bit of a deeper, deeper scent. Because it gives it a bit more weight to the scent. Other than that, it smells as light as it looks. I'm gonna bring a glass to the camera. Can you see those legs on there? Woohoo! Yeah, that's good, right? Hmm. Let's give it a go. Okay. So I'm sure you guys. I'll, I'll be crap poker player, right? Because you guys can probably pick up, pick up, pick up my tails that have when I'm thinking I have a look like up there or something or look down for a moment when I'm really thinking about something <laughs> oh sugar so first things first it's a winter warmer it's got another throat settling hair get a furnace in the chest what's the first thing it's a little dry not very dry but a little dry That citrus scent isn't coming through on the palate. But it is a very smooth rum. A little bit on the bitter side, not on, so it's not a sweet rum at all. In fact, so let me just say this firstly. It's actually a very nice, for, for a sugar, cane juice rum I'm actually quite impressed um, so that's a big tick uh, for this rum uh, yeah no it's a good rum for for yeah it's not my kind of not usually my, not my usual style but I'm very impressed with it I could drink this let's get, let's get some lime in there let's get some lime in there just a little squeeze a little stir Get the flavors to pop a little bit. Oh, what was that? So the lime just cuts that a little bit. Gives it a big, big. It gives it a bit more of a smooth taste. Takes away some of that burnt, that furnace, that winter warmness. It just, yeah, it gets rid of that sort of furnace, furnace, furnace um, heat. I was getting from the first few sips. Just made it a much easier rum. Kind of mellowed it out a little bit. That initial bitterness is a little bit is gone now. It's still there, but it's more towards the back or the throat. More not the initial taste I was feeling I was getting from before. There's something I'm getting, not, I'm not quite, I can't quite place my finger on it. There's something there. I want to say perhaps it's that chocolate, maybe it's a bit more woody in flavour, kind of something, uh, I think a bit earthy is coming through from it, something, I can't quite put my thing, my finger on it as to what it is that's coming through in the back. It was there before the lime, but the lime has made it a little bit, more, little bit more easier to identify. But it's still, still struggling to really uh, get what that is. Hmm. 
Oh, so wait, let's see his mentions. Uh, no, okay. I thought, this, I thought it may have some tasting notes. No, it doesn't have tasting notes in it. Yeah, but definitely that. It may, so, so what, I'm, what it may be, because, because it's very faint, so it may not be, it may just be something, so you know how these rums are always um, aged in oak barrels? It's probably that barrel flavor. Does it say how long it's been aged for? No. It doesn't say how long it's been aged for. Could be something from an aging process that I'm just picking up as a flavor. I think that could be it. Actually, just on a thought, one thing I don't do is talk about how strong the rums are. Don't know if there's stuff you guys want to know about, if I should mention, or I should put in the description, let me know. Um, I can do that if you want me to. If that's, if, that's, if that's information you want to know, I can happily share that um, with you when I'm doing my reviews as well to give you, maybe, maybe that'll help understand or put a bit of paint a bigger a bit a better picture to the flavors maybe that might help you choose rum as well. All right, cool. So you know what time it is. You know you know I know what you're coming for. Um, you come for the score, right? Scores on the doors. So before I do that, you know how we do it. You gotta like, sub, and share. Sharing is caring. Help the channel grow. Um, so yeah. Okay. So. You know how we do it, you got, um, I'm just looking, I'm thinking, you see, you see the tail? <laughs> oh shit, um, okay. So you know how we do it, you got um, buy and enjoy, so buy and keep, buy and enjoy, I, and not bother with it. So I understand I have a biased. And there are some of you that may feel differently, but I'm gonna go with I. It's a good rum, not my favorite kind of rum. It has surprised me how good it is considering, um, but for me, it's just I. Good flavors, but it doesn't pop out, it doesn't stand out. I think the most, one of the most interesting things is a, is a story and the beautiful color. This is a 44%. Uh, when volume rum, so it's pretty strong. Um, so yeah, I think it's definitely a creeper, good rum, but we keep an eye. So that's my review of the Kopali. Did I say it right? Kopali? You told me anyway. Kopali Belizean rum. 